One of the most important things that sets you apart from other videographers is to get creative with your shots and break the rules that other videographers are following. Let me break it down. My name is Maxwell Kane, and I am a videographer and DP based out of Boise, Idaho. And over the years, I've learned that making your shots stand out is extremely important if you're trying to grow on social media or get more jobs as a videographer. The first thing that I always think about is the camera. And when I say this, what I mean is, what kind of camera should I use for this specific project? Most of the time it's not just one, and this is what is commonly referred to as mixed media. And this is where you have multiple different mediums of video, and you combine all of them into one single project. My favorite examples of this are using camcorders, tapes, and regular mirrorless cameras. And I know that camcorders and mirrorless cameras are both technically digital, but they are extremely different when it comes to the actual image quality. I have an older camcorder myself and I love using it for things where I want the footage to seem low key and not necessarily highlight itself in the film. It's also very good if you are creating vlogs or just videos of yourself because it kind of gives off that nostalgic vibe. And another medium I'm a huge fan of is actually using tapes cameras. Whether that is VHS or Hi8 tapes, it can add a very cool effect to your videos. I love using my personal tapes camera when I shoot concerts and skate because it emphasizes those teenage years and that sense of like youthfulness. But getting rid of all the feelings, I think it just looks really cool. The final medium I'm a fan of is the iPhone. Whether you have the brand new iPhone 15 or a beat iPhone 8, the cameras on these things are very good. And they seem to provide a look that is clearly a phone camera. And I like that because sometimes I will go out and I actually won't have my camera, but I will almost always have my phone. And getting a decent shot is better than getting nothing at all. Another big aspect of getting creative shots is the lenses you choose to use. We all know that there are different focal lengths and they can have different effects, but there are lots of special lenses that we don't always think about. A few of my favorites are the probe lenses, the fisheye lenses, and just some specialty lenses and the probe lens is definitely a low use case but when you can use it it can dramatically change the way you see certain things in your videos i recently used one on a fashion shoot and allowed us to get so close up to the jewelry that was woven into the clothing and it looked amazing but moving on to the exact opposite is the fisheye lens i would assume that most of us know what that is and maybe a few of us have actually used them but when i was a kid i remember begging my parents to get me that fisheye adapter for my phone i don't think i ever used it once so it must have grown on me because Later down the line, I picked up one for my Sony mirrorless camera and my tapes camera. And if you really want to make your viewers feel like they are all up in the action, this is the perfect lens. And the reason for that is because you, as the videographer, need to actually be all up in the action. After you have your camera and lens picked out, you can focus on whether you want the camera to move or even how you want the camera to move. There are simple ways of doing that by using a tripod or just holding your camera, but there's also a lot of ways you can move it that'll stand out from the basics. Some of the ones I'm a big fan of are the gimbal, the dolly, the snorri cam, and the car mount. The gimbal is the simplest way to make your shots steady. You can use it for very stable, high-end looking tracking shots. A similar idea is the dolly, and this is best for getting push in or push outs or shots where you need your camera to move on a certain line. It is possible with a gimbal, but you will need to focus highly on how you walk and if you sway the camera at all. The final two things that help with creative camera movement are the Snorri Cam and the car mount. The Snorri Cam is an apparatus that you can attach to your subject and the camera will move with them and it looks so cool. The car mount is just a way of mounting your camera to the top or side of a car and being able to get shots of the car traveling, but it'll stay in the same spot of the frame. Sometimes there will be projects where you can't have a full dolly track or a probe lens and that is where some simple optical effects transitions can come in clutch. The three simplest transitions are the camera whip, the camera flash, and match cutting. The camera whip is very basic. You just pan the camera to the side or up and down very fast at the end of your shot and then you continue that same movement at the beginning of your next shot. This is very useful for making all of your shots cohesive even if the subject matter is much different. The camera flash is something that I'm a huge fan of because you can do it in post-production or regular production. There have been times when I was on a shoot and we actually just had the photographer just take photos with the flash, that way we could use those points as transitions, but there are also ways of doing it in post, like using a film burn transition just from YouTube. I notice I use this very often for mixing two shots of the same thing, but the framing changes slightly. And I feel like this helps hide the fact that the two shots are so similar. The last optical effect is the match cut. And while 
I know that the actual effect is done in post. On set, you can do it by ending and starting your different shots with the subject in the same spot of the frame. Comment down below if you've used any of the tactics you've seen in the video so far, and if so, let me know which one's your favorite. My number one favorite thing to do on set when trying to get creative is to actually just use random things that we can either find or things that we brought. And on that same fashion shoot where we had the dolly, we actually brought a couple of things to mess around with after we had gone through the original shot list. These two things were literally just a flashlight and a laser, and I think it gave us some of our best shots from the entire shoot. We were able to use the flashlight to help spotlight the subject and then use the laser to add some bright red in the frame but also just make it look wicked so you can use anything the coolest part is it's all up to you and you can literally do whatever you want finally you got home from your shoot and you're just sitting down to edit and you're thinking how do I make this just a little bit cooler? Well, one simple thing you can do is just mess with the aspect ratio. I feel like it's so simple that a lot of people just overlook it and always make their videos 16 by nine. But using four by five or 2.31 to one can drastically change the mood and feeling of your video. I am a big fan of four by five, as you can see by this video, because I feel like it forces the viewer to focus more on the composition. And on that same note, another way you can add to your video is just by switching it to black and white. And obviously there is usually forethought that goes into making making a video black and white, but personally, I have edited an entire project in color, and at the last second, I decided to switch it to black and white, and I ended up loving it way more. So whether you are using a vintage camera or a random object, being creative is the most important thing. Don't worry about the boxes that people have created when it comes to modern day cinema. Just do whatever you want, and if you have a reason for it all, then that's what really matters. Thank you so much for watching and sticking until the end, and I will see you guys next Monday. Little kickback chiller session for you guys. I actually planned a whole YouTube video, uh, and it was a story about a video that I did that almost made me quit completely. So honestly, if you're still watching, comment down below, because it's kind of a banger video, but I just didn't know how, like, it's like a story time of, like, just this past experience. So if you guys would want to hear it, I would love to tell you, because it literally made me quit videos for a certain amount of time that I'm not going to say, because I'll say it in the video. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next Monday.